Um, no, I thought it's. I thought it's it a great book. Fascinating. It's a great yeah. book. Teal Swan, um, the anatomy of loneliness is what. What was the aspect? It's. It's got so much. What was the aspect that you thought was interesting? So we were just discussing about in your own. This person talks about the different ways that people cope with loneliness, basically, and the mm. strategies you've used in the past and the pros and cons of them, basically. And okay. I just thought it was really interesting, and I think. Um, other people might find it interesting to learn what you're learning. Sure. So this is this is cutting edge for me. So the reason that I don't often talk about this, except to Ben, is because I could change my mind in four days. But I'll, yeah. I'll state it. Um, so I mentioned my MDMA experience in one of the last podcasts, and in some, that experience was an exploration of the reasons that I had for not being loving and not connecting. And those reasons were it hurt, <laughs> it was upsetting. Uh, when that connection was severed, it was devastating. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was an exploration of the reasons that I don't connect. And so what's interesting is I often go into these books, exercises, psychedelic journeys with the idea of like, I'm gonna become love, I'm going to connect more. And what was useful for me was to go, oh wow, this is part of the acceptance. Here I am trying to change myself to be more loving instead of starting where I fucking am and having the good grace to explore and be like, well, why am I like this? Mm. And what do you find? There's great reasons that need to be recognized and understood. And I mentioned to you that one of the strategies that I hadn't recognized that I was using was in uh, limiting the degree to which I was reliant on any particular individual, mm -hmm. such that there wasn't a single point of failure in terms of my love and connection. So what that meant was you and I used to talk every day, live together, you were my 100% of the time was with you. And if you had been hit by a bus or changed your life path mm -hmm. or got a girlfriend. Yeah, I literally just got, got a girlfriend. Said, I want to go back to Wall Street yeah, yeah, yeah. and marry my ex. That would have been emotionally devastating mm -hmm. because I was heavily invested. And I didn't recognize what I, what I thought that I was doing, which made sense to me was, oh, I'll just need Ben less and then I'll get a girl and I'll need her this amount. I'll have my brother, I'll need him this amount. Mm -hmm. And I'll just have several people that all feel like 20s out of 100. Yeah, and so let's dive into this because I think a lot of people think that sounds really smart. And at, and for a while, up until a few weeks ago, I was like, smart, this like I'm diversified, exactly. <laughs> I'm yeah. diversified. And what she suggests that I think is the truth is that that's just defense. That's mm -hmm. that's just, um, I don't mean to be mean to myself, That's that's cowardice. That is an unwillingness to experience the beauty of life for fear of the sadness mm -hmm. of life. Um, and that was one of the things that I took from reading this book is like, okay, I don't know how I'm going to get to the, whatever my next level is of openness to total connection to the degree that it could rip me apart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it does seem like this uh, hedging, this diversification, this portfolio of caring is the mind's way of protecting my heart. Yeah. Uh, and I don't have the answer. That's yeah, why. Yeah. No, but that's actually the part I thought people would find interesting. Yeah. Like a lot of people have been hurt by parents yeah. or kids or loved ones in relationships. And they hear this strategy and they think, oh, that's a, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Like just make everyone important enough that they're important, but never important enough to hurt you. I think that's probably something a lot of people go like, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I don't have that already, I want that. Yeah, yeah. And so the idea that that comes at a cost, I think, is something that people may not realize. Because I think, let's not call it cowardice, but let's say it is defensive. It is a defensive strategy. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of it. It's like, I don't want to get hurt again. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's interesting to consider that per perhaps it's like when you go into prevent defense in football. Yeah. And then you get scored lose, on faster yeah, than yeah. ever before. It's kind of like, yeah, this defensive thing is actually coming at a, a big cost, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it's just interesting. I thought I think people would love to. I mean, I'll just speak for myself. I'd love to hear as you dive into that. Yes. So what I do feel the the I feel confident that the lesson that I took is twofold. One, we we talked. I don't know if it's going to be on the main podcast, but at Patreon at least, we talked extensively about acceptance today yeah. and whether acceptance. And this was an experience of like, oh wow, I can be oriented towards love and connection and not be accepting of myself mm. because I'm going, no, I'm going to get to love as opposed to being like, no, tell me where you are, Charlie, right now mm. emotionally, which is defensive to these things. Mm. And the actual loving act is diving into the defensiveness, assuming that it has a positive purpose, exploring it and not trying to change it. Because one of the things that I experienced is when I try to change it, this part of me locks down and hides. It doesn't want to be seen. Mm. But when I go, you know what? Fuck it. 
you're going to be hateful your whole life. <laughs> you're not going to connect. It's like, okay, now I can talk. Now yeah. I can tell you how I feel. But when I know you're trying to root me out for some higher purpose, I will never reveal myself. I'll never come out of the subconscious shadows. Um, so that's kind of what I mean by acceptance is like, you have to go in willing to be like, if you want to be a hateful little uh, disconnected shit to the day you die, I love you so much that I would allow that. Mm. And then it it's like, okay, here I am. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, so the first thing is that, wow, one could be oriented at love and connection without uh, truly practicing love and connection towards oneself. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is I think that the answer, as I said, is through. It is not by avoiding my defensiveness. It is by allowing myself to experience my defensiveness and be it for a while and see how it arises in my normal life and see what it feels like. Uh, as it like right now I can feel it being exposed and it doesn't like it mm. you know what I mean it's like okay like here we are this is what it feels like there's this heat in my face right now which which doesn't like it mm. um, but I do think that and and also right now I think I am being tender towards it which is like you don't need to rip it open on camera either like mm -hmm. <laughs> take your time yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah so I that that's the process of like this is what I meant earlier when I meant said understanding, interest, acceptance, and approval mm. uh, being the foundation of love as I understand it. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. what I got. I don't have a solution. No, I, just thought, <laughs> I, think, I thought it was interesting when we talked about it briefly. It's a great book. It's a great book beyond just that simple point. Um, I think she does a really good job of nailing uh, a lot of the internal stuff. It's very, very good. So What's it called? It's called The Anatomy of Loneliness. If you don't want to jump into emotional mastery and you prefer to start with a book, there's a lot of good ones, quite frankly, but this is a, a one that is um, in part inspired some of the later sections of emotional mastery. Cool. Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.